How can we prepare the income statement from the inventory card? Now, the income statement is actually our next sack, so we don't really know what that is. Uh, so, let's just put it in perspective. We've got our accounting process here. Now, stage one for every business is that millions of transactions occur every year, and there should be a source document. Stage two is we record all of those. So for us, we're doing that in the general journal, the ledgers, and also inventory cards. Step three is what our next sack is about. We prepare these reports to summarize the performance of the business. And our unit four focuses on analyzing and making decisions from those reports. But it's going back to the reports uh, step. We've got three. We're now we've done the balance sheet. We've done that quite a bit. But there's actually two other reports. One's called the income statement. One's called the cash flow statement. So we don't need to really be experts on those now. We just want a brief overview of the inventory part of this one, the income statement. So what is the income statement? Well, it's a financial report which just details the revenues earned by the business. And then we minus away all the expenses incurred. What do earn and incurred mean? Well, we'll get to that when we deal with this as a separate topic on the next sack. And that will equal our net profit. And that's it. Revenues earned minus expenses incurred equals net profit. But what we need to know for now is just some of the sections in the income statement. Not all of them for now, but just a few of them. So that what we're going to do is, if we're working down the page, we're going to have these sections. So the first one is we'll have a section called revenues. And that just has the sales of inventory to customers. Now, if we want, we can break that down into cash sales and credit sales. Why would we do that? We'll look at that when we do um, this topic in the subsequent chapter. But yeah, it's, it's kind of good information to know how many sales were cash and how many were credit. So we probably should break that down. What we'll do next is minus away our sales returns. So that's inventory returned by customers for a credit. And what that will do is it'll equal a new figure. And we're going to call that figure net sales. It's simply your revenues less your sales returns. And that's going to be an important number because what good is revenue if a customer brings something back? So what we want is something called net sales. We really should call it net revenues because it's revenues less sales returns, but our course says net sales. Then we've got a really important section. We're going to minus away something called cost of goods sold. That, are, that is all costs incurred or expenses in getting inventory into a condition, a condition and location ready for sale. For example, cost of sales, delivery in, and there's a bunch more. We need to know this really well, but we don't need to know it yet. So all we're going to say is there's going to be a section now called cost of goods sold. And all we'll do for now is put in something called cost of sales. Forget what this is and there's other things that we've got to deal with. We'll worry about that later. What we'll just worry about now is we're going to have a section called cost of goods sold. And it's going to have something called cost of sales in it. And what that will equal is something called gross profit. So we've done net profit, but gross profit, what's that? That is essentially the profit made from buying and selling inventory. If we look at this, we've got our revenues of inventory minus returns of inventory equals net sales, then we take away the cost of the inventory, and that will give us something called gross profit. So it's not our final profit, it's just the profit that our business has from buying and selling inventory. Then what we want to do is have a little section here, it's either going to say plus or minus, we don't know, because the question depends. It's going to say plus if there's an inventory gain, or minus if there's an inventory loss. And we're going to get that from our inventory count, which we've been doing in some of our earlier videos. And what that will equal is something called adjusted gross profit. And that is simply this gross profit figure, either plus or minus the inventory gain or inventory loss. And that is where we need to stop. That, that's all we need to do for now. There will be this section called other expenses and final net profit, but we're going to worry about that when we get to the actual chapter on that, because that is the, the next sack. It's not on this sack. So we'll just stop here because we can do down to adjust a gross profit based on what we've learned from the inventory card. So let's say this is an inventory card we're given and it says, give me an income statement. Well, we just might need to know a little, a few bits of info. One thing I can't see in an inventory card is how, this is what everything costs. I can't see what it sells for. So the question should tell me that. So this one says, each unit sells for $50 plus $5 GST. Look at this one on the 10th. So on the 10th, we've got a memo in the out column. Well, memo in the out column on the 10th could either be drawings or advertising. So it says here, this was used for personal use. So that's drawings. And then the 21st of Feb, memo 6 here, this one is going to be inventory given to a local cafe in return for promoting our business's products. That's going to be advertising. And then we've got the 28th of February. So the last day of the month, this memo relates to an inventory count. And lastly, the business reports its cash sales and credit sales separately. All right, well, even though we're not experts on this, we can start an income statement. We can put in a section called revenues. 
sales of inventory break into cash and sales. So we're going to start revenues. We'll write cash sales. That's the heading. And this is the item. And we've got two columns here. So we put items in the first column and then totals of the sections in the right hand column. Let's get started. So where would we find cash sales? Well, we've watched an earlier video, hopefully, where it says, how do we interpret an inventory card? We need the document number and whether it's an in or an out. So cash sales would be receipts in the out column. So I've got a cash sale there and I've actually got one here too. I've got two receipts in the out column. So there's my cash sales. So let's just look at those on their own. There they are here. So how much are my cash sales? Well, I'm actually going to write $800. Why? Where did that come from? Because if I add 140, 18, and 152, that definitely doesn't come to $800. And that's because here, I'm actually writing the selling price, not the cost price. What I need the inventory card for is to know how many units I sold. It says seven, one, and eight. That's a total of 16. So, and I know earlier I was told each one sells for 50. So 16 times 50 is 800. So the inventory card can't give me the amount there, but it will tell me how many units. And that's how I got that. 16 units at $50 is 800. So now, we just note when we report sales, always use the selling price and not the cost price. We better do the credit sales now. How are we going to do that? Well, let's go back to our inventory card. This time we're looking in the hour column for a sale, but we're going to look for invoices. So we've got this one here. Invoice, hour column. Look at this one, invoice. That, that could be a, a credit sale, but it's in the in column. So that's a purchase. So that can't be, it's got to be this one. And we can also see there's this one here. Two credit sales here. Looking at them on their own, yeah, What again, I'm not going to need the cost amount. I'm just going to need the number of units here, 13, 7, and 3. That's a total of 23 units, and I sell each one for 50. 23 times 50 is 1150, and when we report sales, we're using the selling price and not this cost price here. And what we got now is this is the two items, 800 and 1150. We need the total of the section in the second column. And that's what this second column is for. It's to say your total sales are the, uh, the, or total revenues are, are the sum of these two numbers here. What next? Well, inventory, uh, sorry, our income statement said we got revenues. Then we'll do less uh, minus sales returns. And that will equal something called net sales. So let's have a look at that. We've got cash sales, credit sales. We've done that. We've got to put in sales returns, less that. You don't have to write the word less, by the way, as long as you math that up. I just do it. Or you could write dash. That, but even if you don't do that, that's fine too. That equals net sales. Let's have a look. So hopefully, you know, you've learned this by now from our earlier videos. Uh, I'm looking for a credit note for a sales return. So there's a credit note. There's a credit note. Which one's the sales return? What's well, going to be the one in the in column? So here, it looks like four units were brought back by a customer. So I've got to put that here. So four units. Now I can see the total was 18 and 57. That comes to 75. But here, I'm actually going to write 200. Because with a sales return, just like with sales, we're using the selling price. The customer doesn't get, you know, when they bring something back, you don't credit them the cost price. You credit them the sales price. So if these sell for 50, Four units at 50 is 200. Now, I always write that in brackets because it looks like a negative and it really sticks out because negatives, uh, bracket numbers are usually bad numbers. It means something's gone down or something. You don't have to do that. Okay, don't get stressed if you don't put brackets. What is important is that your net sales equals 1950 minus 200. So 1950 minus 200 is 1750. That's what's important. So don't stress about whether you write less or minus or dash. You don't need any of that stuff. As long as your number's balanced, then that's fine. What's next? It said, after net sales, we should do something called cost of goods sold. Don't worry about what it is. We'll do that later. We'll just say there should be a section or a heading called cost of goods sold, and the item in it should say cost of sales. So I'm going to write less. Again, you don't need to do that, but I'll write less. Cost of goods sold is cost of sales. That's a tricky one. Where am I going to get that from? Well, all my sales were cash or credit. So let's. I'm looking for receipts and invoices for cash and credit sales in the out column. So I've got one there. Got one there, got one there, and one there. So sales will be in the out column. I guess I left this one because it's a credit note. That's something else. That's a purchase return. And I got this one's a memo and this one's a memo. So they, they can't be sales. So there's all my sales. And these are the cost price that we did in the inventory card. So what I can do is just add them up. But I've got this one here. This is really tricky. This is the hardest one because this was a sales return. 
That's a credit note in the end column. Why do I need to know that? Well, let's have a look here. That's all the info we need. What are we doing? I'm trying to find the cost of sales. So that would be the pink numbers. So I've got 140 plus 18 plus 234 plus 126 plus 57 plus 152. You go, that's it. That's my cost of sales done. I've just actually now got to take out the sales returns because if a customer brings something back then I, I don't have a cost of sale anymore so I've got to take this number out that 18 and I've got to take that 57 out so now if I add all those numbers up the final cost of sales will be six hundred and fifty two dollars so what have we got here well there's my inventory card as it is um, sorry income statement as it is I'm just getting this number here the cost of sales was 652 and it was just the total of all those numbers that I did on the previous slide. Why did I write that in the second column? Because that's kind of the section total. It's, yeah, it doesn't matter if you get the columns mixed up, that doesn't matter either. But I just write that there because I'm going to do 1750, 652. What's that going to be? That's going to be something called my gross profit. That is the profit made from buying and selling inventory. And all it is, is in this case, it's 1750 minus 652. This one minus this one is 1098. And that's why I just did that in that second column, because we've got totals here. What's next? It says either plus or minus an inventory gain or loss. And we get that from the inventory count. And that will usually be done on the last day of the period. So here I've got an inventory count with a memo, and it's resulted in an in, not an out. So an in with an inventory count must be an inventory gain. So I've got an inventory gain. Of forty dollars, I've gained forty dollars of inventory. So I write plus inventory gain forty, and now that just leaves. Just note that when we report inventory gains and losses, yeah, we just use the cost price, not the selling price. I never sold this inventory, so the sale price is not important here. I just need the cost price when I'm doing an inventory gain or an inventory loss. And lastly, that just leaves adjusted gross profit, and that is simply the gross profit plus or minus this inventory gain or loss. So in this case, it was a gross profit of 1,098 plus an inventory gain of 40. So that would be a final adjusted gross profit of the sum of those two numbers, and that would be $1,138. And so what I've got now, we don't need to be experts on what the income statement is and how to analyze it. I just need you to know these sections and the order. So make sure you get your cue cards and set them up so you know the sections of the income statement. And all you've got to do for now is just plonk in the numbers from the inventory card in each section.